I want to deal with the subject sight for sore eyes. Our eyes look and we capture a lot of pictures. Your eyes have taken a lot of pictures that you can, your mind will take you back to certain things that have taken place because your eyes are registering everything that happens and taking pictures and putting them in your mind. And I believe that the eyes are important, but I believe that when the Holy Spirit comes down and begins to touch your life, He takes the scales off of your eyes and makes you think, see things that you have never seen in your entire life. You will even see your future before you. Hallelujah! A total different person because God has touched your eyes and made you see once again the way He wanted to see, well, the way He wanted you to see on that original day before Adam sinned. Amen. See, but sometimes sight discourages you. I know that many of you have seen things, maybe with families, maybe with people that you love dearly. You have seen them, and some of them have discouraged you. Some things have broken your heart, and you have felt the depression because those eyes are seeing everything that's taking place, and your body feels everything that your body is seeing. But there also there is also a sight that will give you energy, like this conference will give you energy. Yeah. Like the men that are going to preach will give you energy. Amen. When you hear them, you will recognize that they are sons of the living God. Amen. That God has lifted them up for such a time as this. Amen. This is why the book of Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18 says, Well, there is no vision, the people perish. I don't know about you, but I got 2020 vision. I got that evil eye vision. There's some of you out there that are full of the glory of God that you can feel and see and say to yourself, I know that something supernatural is about to take place. So I want to say this night that there is a need for a vision. Because vision will motivate you. Will give you energy that you never had. You will speak vision until you're dying in your bed. I have visited preachers that have been Holy Ghost preachers that have gone through serious surgeries. And when they come out of the little surgery, all of a sudden I hear the voice saying, I must obey the vision of the Lord. Because something is engraved inside of their spirit. It is something that God has taken a brand and branded them and put a passion to do the work of God. Every man in the Bible was human like you and me. When you think about Abraham leaving his father, the Bible says about Abraham that he looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. When you think about Moses, the Bible says that he considered not the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. These are men that were converted, were changed by the power of God. When you look at Joseph, he had a vision of those 12 stars bowing before him. And the Bible says that he went through every test. They even went through the test of Potiphar's house. And the scripture says that that lady wanted him and to take him to bed. But you can rip the clothes out of Joseph, but you can never rip off his character. Amen. All right. He withstood the test of time because he was in love with God who gave him the vision. When you think about Jacob, when he had that dream as he was laying in that bed, the scripture says that he saw a ladder all the way into heaven and the angels descending and ascending. And the scripture says that Jacob was never the same after that dream. God gave him a vision to accomplish here on this earth. 
Because God was bringing down messages and descending with messages and ascending with messages and descending with messages and he knew that there was a real God even though he was a crook. Isaiah, a time of desperation when he saw God on the throne for the first time, it blew his mind. Peter, James, and John, when they were there with, in the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus, and there they saw Elijah, there they saw Jesus being transformed right before their eyes. They were never the same. Because we serve a God that when he appears and gives you a vision, you will never, never, never go back to smoke when you ended up in a revival. Stephen was being thrown rock, they threw rocks at Stephen and the scripture says he looked up and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. He wasn't sitting, he was standing. He was standing. In other words, he was saying, I honor you because you have stood up for me and I will stand up for you. <laughs> Paul the apostle that was the chief of sinners, the Bible says on his way to Damascus, God threw him up on that horse. And God gave him a vision. He says, from here on, you're going to preach the gospel. And when you preach the gospel, everybody is not going to love you. But the vision is motivating you to accomplish what I want you to accomplish. You're going to go through trials. You're going to go through tribulation. You're going to go through betrayal. You're going to go through hatred. You're going to go through your own brethren turning their heads, their, their lives against you and betraying you. But nevertheless, that vision is going to keep you motivated and you're going to write all the letters to the churches. So vision will motivate you. I believe that this conference is very important. I believe that some of you are going to change. You're going to do a turning around, man, a 360. You're going to come alive. You're dead, but God's going to raise you from the dead. You and I would not be here if it had not been for a vision. Amen. I want to take you back to those that were with me there in Azusa. With all the demon-possessed people. With all the witchcraft we had. With all the Christians pointing the finger. With everyone saying, he'll never do it. He'll never accomplish it. Well, I wish that my critics were here tonight. Because vision will motivate you. It's like a cork. They might push you down the seat, but that cork is going to pop up. Yeah. And you're going to say, hello there. Hello there. <laughs> what did Jesus see? He saw a harvest. He was on this earth, but he was God incarnated in the flesh. He saw the he saw the Gal the Galileans, the Galilee, yeah, the Galilee, Galileans, yeah, yes. <laughs> he saw the multitude. He saw the sheep without a shepherd, harassed by wolves that were threatening them, beating them up with religion. And this is the harvest that God said to the seventy. I want you to go over there to that harvest that is all beaten up to pieces where men have said they cannot ever do anything for God again. I am sending you 70 to preach my word and to bring life and not bring death. Amen. God also saw another harvest, the Samaritans. The Samaritans were the outcast. They were proud. They were hard. They were religious. And that's when the disciples said, we don't want to go there. This harvest is not ready. It's going to take four more months. Mm -hmm. And Jesus got upset. He says, 
the harvest was already ready. 